Why does my arm hurt? From little leaguers to golden sneakers. This is a case-based approach. My name is Mary Lloyd Ireland. I'm a professor at the University of Kentucky, orthopedic surgeon. This was presented at the Sports Medicine Essentials course through American College of Sports Medicine, formerly the Team Physician course. This will be our menu. We'll start with the elbow, then go to shoulder, and then go to conclusions. There will be a time code to tell you where each of these will be in the presentation. The appearance and fusion of secondary ossification centers is very important in the skeletally immature, active patient or athlete. In females and males, there's a difference of about a couple of years of the appearance and fusion of these apophyses, secondary ossification centers about the elbow. This was from a chapter written in Dr. Andrews' book, Injuries in Baseball. And I would refer you to this chapter, which is also on my website, which is myname.com. If you're concerned about an elbow in a young skeletally mature athlete get a view of the other side and it makes it much better to compare to see if th something is missing or something doesn't look symmetric. So these are the appearances and fusion of the times in females on the left and males on the right. Think about a differential diagnosis of the elbow in different compartments medial, lateral, posterior, anterior. And the medial compartment is where it's all happening, so to speak. We can also think about acute injuries and chronic injuries. Acute injuries in the skeletally immature differential diagnosis is avulsion fracture of the medial humeral epicondyle, UCL sprain, which is rare in the young, young athlete, but is becoming increasingly more common in that almost skeletal mature athlete, although he's only 14-year-old pitcher. Ulnar nerve subluxation, hypermobility of the ulnar nerve occurs in about 20% of elbows. This can be an acute event associated with one of the two diagnoses above, or you can have a fracture. Chronically, Little Leaguer's elbow, described by Adams in 1964, is a medial humeral epicondyle fracture through the apophysis of the medial humeral epicondyle or the origin of the flexor pronator muscle mass. You can also have stress reaction and nerve instability, which could be a physiologic hypermobility of the ulnar nerve. Again, we're seeing more and more injuries of the UCL in young pitchers. Beware of that and do appropriate diagnostic tests, physical exam, rest, and MRI scans as indicated. What about laterally? We used to see a lot of osteochondritis to secans. The radial head is much more hard than the capitellum, so the repetitive forces of compression cause a OCD lesion of the capitellum. Don't see that as often in Japan. There are a lot of OCD lesions in their young throwers. You can also have a fracture of the capitellum, avulsion of the lateral humeral epicondyle, which is uh, more unusual, more common in gymnastics, for example. You can have subluxation of the radial head or a fracture of the capitellum radial head in the acute. Chronic lateral humeral epicondylitis, you can have radial head overgrowth with OCD lesions that are chronic, loose bodies, osteochondritis to secans, and there is uh, some conditions of osteochondritis of the radial head, but these are very unusual. Posteriorly, the osgood schlatters disease of the elbow is an overuse traction apophysitis of the olecranon that we see on a chronic basis. This is more common in throwers such as quarterbacks and pitchers, weightlifters, and they hurt directly over that olecranon apophysis. Chronically, you can also see spurs in the back in throwers, loose bodies, and posterior medial spurs. Acutely, olecranon fractures do occur. You can have soft tissue bursal contusions that can create swelling in that area. If they do have something going on with that olecranon apophysis, 
They hurt when you're resisting elbow extension and hurt directly on palpation over the olecranon apophysis where the triceps inserts. Anteriorly, we don't see as common in the um, elbow. Think about acute a distal physeal humerus fracture, capsular sprain in the hyperextended elbow, or loose bodies can hurt anteriorly associated with locking. Fortunately, in sports, we don't see supracondylar fractures. These are usually children climbing trees, if that happens anymore, or jumping out of trees, falling off of swing sets. There can be catastrophic problems following a displaced supracondylar humerus fracture, and this is neurovascular injury. The brachial artery median nerve are at risk, as you can see in this netter drawing where they are in the fracture site itself. Can develop compartment syndrome. There are some things that you never want to see, and that's one of these displaced fractures. They should be urgently transferred to a hospital preferably a pediatric facility with on-call pediatric orthopedic surgeons who can take care of this potentially very serious injury with neurovascular complications. So this is a displaced supracondylar humerus fracture. Refer to the center and get them in, a, in the hands of surgeons who feel comfortable dealing with this injury. What you never want to see in your career is a Volkmann's ischemic contracture, as shown in this picture. But once you see it, you'll never forget it. So you want to get these individuals in to be treated urgently at the proper facility and make a quick referral and contact that hospital, hopefully a children's hospital with a pediatric orthopedist on call. These supracondylar humerus fractures, in addition to the potential for Neurovascular complications, also you can have a malunion, you can have a cubitus varus. It's more cosmetic than functional. You can see this individual on the right has a gunstock deformity of his right arm where his arm is coming in. It will make him hit his thigh as he walks. Uh, cosmetically, it is oftentimes not acceptable to the family, and then an osteotomy of the humerus has to be done. So this shows the pinning that was done, and then his post-op, varus deformity. Elbow dislocations, think about this in an older child and an adolescent. You, the ones I just showed you were the distal humerus, a supracondylar fracture. So this is a transficeal fracture, but you have to also think about a displaced medial epicondyle fracture in the joint, as you can see in this individual. And again, you may not notice it on the dislocated film before the reduction, but get a post-op reduction film always, and sometimes you have to get the opposite side to try to better see where that medial humeral epicondyle is. This is a 14-year-old football athlete. He was going to get up after being on the field, and somebody landed on the back of his upper arm, creating a posterior elbow dislocation. Our thumb is in his olecranon fossa, so the ulna has gone posteriorly. This is what his x-ray looks like. So it looks like a posterior dislocation without a fracture, but if you notice, there could be something that is missing from this medial aspect, which you can't really tell unless you get a reduction film and get the opposite side. You can see a little better on this oblique. Sometimes it's hard to get the x-rays with the child uh, hurting or the adolescent hurting when they are dislocated, but get pre and post reduction x-rays. And there's the displaced medial epicondyle that was trapped in the joint. And always get post-reduction films. The ulnar collateral ligament attaches up into the axilla, if you will, of the medial aspect of the humerus and not actually on the medial humeral epicondyle. The olecranon apophysis, like we talked about, is where the triceps tendon attaches. So in the skeletally immature, when they're throwing, those tensile forces go more through the medial epicondyle, and hence you have an overgrowth of that medial humeral epicondyle. Technically, it's called an apophysis, where the origin of the flexor pronator muscle is. 
but always look at this medial aspect, as you can see up here, where the appearance of the medial humeral apophysis is from seven to nine years old, and the fusion varies from age 14 to 17. Again, a view of the opposite side is very helpful. This is that individual who had the elbow dislocation that I showed the films earlier. The ulnar nerve in this bottom right you can see is uh, fortunately was normal, but you can see how um, hemorrhagic it is. We made sure it was out of harm's way, didn't do any transposition, but carefully dissected out and put the medial humeral epicondyle back anatomically. You can see here how displaced it was, and this shows that medial humeral epicondyle. The complications after an elbow dislocation are stiffness, so you repair the capsule. Uh, you can put some sutures into the medial humeral epicondyle, but this epicondyle, or the ulnar collateral ligament, is again attaching more down in the humerus, and then after you put the, and then you put down the uh, uh, flexor pronator muscle origin with bone through a screw or two anatomically, as shown in this post-op x-ray. Medial humeral epicondyle, as mentioned, it's the origin of the flexor pronator muscle mass, the ulnar collateral ligament. The most important is the anterior oblique bands, like the ACL of the elbow, if you will, and it attaches in the medial epicondyle, coronoid, anterior, inferior, and not directly on the medial humeral epicondyle. This is, again, a view from the front showing the attachment on the humerus of the ulnar collateral ligament, which is right in here. Flexor pronator mass is higher up, so you usually see one or the other injury. Ulnar collateral ligament in the almost skeletally immature and in the younger thrower with wide open epiphyses and apophyses, you see little leaguer's elbow or a humeral medial epicondyle stress fracture, stress reaction. Lateral forces are tensile with the radial head compressing on the more soft uh, capitellum causing osteochondral injury, osteochondritis to secans. Medially are the tensile forces causing UCL injury and the more skeletally almost mature or medial epicondyle uh, injuries. So think about the nature of the forces and that'll help you make the right diagnosis. Distally, the anterior bundle of the ulnar collateral ligament attaches onto the a onto the sublime tubercle. This shows an avulsion of the sublime tubercle, which is very unusual, but you want to pick that up on your plane films. You can usually see it, and is also seen with bone edema and a bit of an avulsion fleck on an MRI scan. More commonly, the ulnar collateral ligament tears more proximal or mid-substance than distal and cannot be repaired. UCL reconstructions need to be done. Medial elbow pain, differential diagnosis in throwers. Younger individual is a medial epicondyle or apophyseal stress fracture. Older UCL tear, think about associated ulnar neuritis or hypermobility. Flexor pronator strain is much less common. You diagnose that with manual muscle testing, resistance of flexion of the elbow and pronation of the forearm. More, less commonly is a subluxating medial triceps. You can have valgus extension overload that's more common in an older thrower. And then a sublime tubercle fracture of the proximal ulna, which also is unusual but can be picked up on plain films and MR. There is some controversy about which medial epicondyle fractures to fix in that is there amount of displacement or is there some rotation? You can see in this individual on the left, this was a football quarterback, baseball pitcher, which is a common combination, and see how much of a gap there is there. So in this situation, because of this, the displacement of about five millimeters, and also you can see where it's a little bit rotated. So in addition to being off because the flexor pronator is pulling distally, sometimes there will be some rotation. So in throwers, there is concern that these may need to be fixed more often than not. So to fix or not to fix is not clear in the literature, but it is something that is dependent on the sport, amount of displacement, and perhaps some rotation due to the flexor pronator mass pulling on that apophysis. It's extra-articular, 
and the ulnar collateral ligament does not attach here. Ulnar collateral ligament attaches here, and in this individual, the UCL was completely normal and stable. This is a 12-year-old who had had elbow pain for four months, pitcher, quarterback. You can see his right elbow x-rays. See the displacement of the medial epicondyle from the medial humerus here? Doesn't really look too rotated. This patient and mother decided definitely not to have surgery done, which I agreed with. Keeping him from throwing was the, was the treatment. Didn't have to put him in a cast. He behaved, and if you can see the progression here, at one month in the middle, and then this is his opposite normal side, so this is a good way to explain to parents and patients why you're letting them, why you're not allowing them to throw, and then at three months, he's completely healed. So here's his normal opposite left side compared to his acute injury here on the right. Return to throwing without any residual problems, UCL was normal. This is a almost 13-year-old right-hand dominant pitcher. He stated that his elbow had been bothering him for about three weeks. Oftentimes it's longer than that. They don't pay attention to pain in that age group. He kept on throwing. Little League, now he's in the All-Stars. He's been in a rapid growth phase. He's 6'2", weighs 190 pounds, really doesn't have any instability. This was a case that I shared with my partner, Dr. Adam Smith, who took care of him. These are his initial x-rays, and this x-ray looks a little different than what I just showed with that displaced full medial apophysis. He has a little fleck off here, so and this was acute. Here's his normal side, so he does have a displaced medial epicondyle fracture, but it's not the whole epicondyle or the whole apophysis, and we had some concerns that did this really involve the ulnar collateral ligament? and his ulnar collateral ligament actually was normal. He stopped throwing. We let him move his elbow, but not do anything that created tension over the medial aspect of the elbow. So this is his minimally displaced fracture. And if you keep him from throwing, they will go ahead and heal. This is his x-ray. We x-rayed him every couple of weeks or month. This is his x-ray at two weeks, didn't show any change in, in displacement. This is at four weeks six weeks, and you can see here where it looks completely normal and healed at four months. He continued to grow. We worked on hip core strength on the opposite side, working on his rotator cuff. If you see this BB bullet appearance to a fracture of the inferior aspect of the medial epicondyle, it may heal if you don't allow them to pitch too early. It may take a long time to heal, but the ulnar collateral ligament is usually intact. This would be a situation where if you had any concerns about it, do a MRI scan. So the bottom line is like a BB gun, like a BB. Don't allow them to fire too soon with that throwing arm. It takes about six months before they should be back throwing. In the meantime, you can do sports-specific strengthening, getting them used to their new, new height and weight. This is an unfortunate situation where this 14-year-old pitcher had medial, epo, medial elbow pain for about a year, uh, and his apophysis, his medial, medial humeral epiphysis was still open, but you can see here on his stress views, he had an ulnar collateral ligament injury and a chronic avulsion there. So which comes first? This didn't heal, and with continued throwing, he had a UCL injury, so the UCL and this piece are pretty close together. His baseball career was ended, but he did have an elbow that he could use for everyday activity. The risk factors in these young throwers are overuse, fatigue, high pitch velocity, showcase participation. In studies from the American Sports Medicine Institute, Dr. Andrews and Fleissig, the problems were more related to the more months a year greater than eight months a year of throwing, five-fold increase in arm pain, shoulder and elbow injuries, greater than 80 pitches a game, four-fold, faster, greater than 85 miles per hour, 2.6 times greater injury of the shoulder and the elbow. Dr. Andrews is quoted as having said, the speed gun is the worst invention in the history of Little League Baseball. 
which I would agree with. Also, arm fatigue. Most of these young athletes, children with shoulder and elbow injuries that presented to the American Sports Medicine Institute for evaluation had arm fatigue. And if they had arm fatigue, they were 36 times greater risk of injury. UCL reconstructions, doing them more and more in younger individuals. This was 27 patients, 50% increase in UCL reconstruction in high school players by Dr. Andrews. And this is alarming. So these are preventable injuries. Let them play other positions and not pitch at too early an age with bad mechanics and during growth phases. There are programs. There's the STOP program that Dr. Andrews championed when he was the president of the American Orthopedic Sports Medicine Society. So STOP stands for Sports Trauma and Overuse Prevention. Participation in sports is great, but overuse is a problem. There are more injuries from overuse than acute injuries, such as falling off of something. And these potentially are career-changing if we don't appreciate them early, diagnose them early, and keep the children from hurting themselves. They don't feel pain. This is the .com, sport, stopsportsinjuries.com, and there's 16 sports that are up on this site. Refer your patients, children, kids to this site and let them figure out what their injuries are. Sometimes they're more attuned than their parents are. Textbook by Dr. Andrews, Any Given Monday. Dr. Andrews sees a lot of patients, and on that Monday clinic, he wrote this book and associated with Don Yeager, talking about sports injuries, prevention for athletes, parents, and coaches based on his experience. I would recommend this book as a good read for parents who have athletes and children who want or don't want to be athletes. So I think it's a really good read and a good resource for multiple sports in our youth. Prevention is key. Pritchers are at high risk. No speed guns, less showcases, do training other than baseball. Little league pitchers do not become big league pitchers. Remember that and tell that to the parents. That big pitcher syndrome that I showed, the 13-year-old, skeletally and mentally immature, they grow fast, poor pitching mechanics, have hip weakness, resulting in upper extremity overuse. We, the healthcare providers, should protect our young athletes and reduce this rate of rotator cuff and ulnar collateral ligament injuries in young pitchers. Preventable. Atlanta Braves did a study that was never published. Their Big League Atlanta Braves pitchers did not pitch in Little League, so I think you can use this to talk to parents about injuries and making sure that these injuries are treated with rest, avoiding those activities such as tensile forces medially and pitching for a period of time. Give them a game plan on how long it'll be, and Little League pitchers do not become Big League pitchers. Use that pitch, it works. Nolan Ryan didn't start pitching till he was a junior in high school. Never got hurt. So in this presentation from our young athletes to our older athletes, I've tried to show you what things to use to make the correct diagnosis. In our older golden sneaker athletes, you need to make sure they have a realistic expectation of their shoulder arthroplasty and make sure that you've gone through all other options before uh, referring them for arthroplasty surgery. Thank you very much.